Hi there, Renan Joran from Sophist. So maybe you're wondering what are the TRLs, technology readiness levels. A lot of our clients from Europe mostly are using this kind of uh, framework. Does it make sense actually for your situation? And first, what actually is it? Um, what exactly is done in each of these phases? Let's go through that. Let's compare it to traditional medical devices development frameworks and also consumer electronics development frameworks to see how it all stack up and compares. Let's look at the different technology readiness levels from one all the way through to nine. Uh, first, uh, what is just before and just after? Well, just before should be the plan of what exactly you're trying to uh, to build, to develop, right? So this was developed by the US NASA agency when they were planning to um, to build something to send in orbit around Mars in 1970, I think. So, you know, uh, they already had a pretty good grasp on what they were trying to do. However, they wanted to develop something and they had a lot of work and a lot of testing in different environments, including in space environment. So here I took the original NASA um, wording, right? Sometimes it's a little bit different for different uh, depending on the source where you, you you found these different levels but that's really the the, the point is uh, you already define what you want to build this is all about technology so all about getting all the way to the entire system if your product is, is really uh, a system um, of interrelated parts let's say uh, but let's say a, an entire prototype uh, that demonstrates that it's it's functioning well in the actual environment right uh, so instead of thinking about space and things like that we, we, we might think of um, accelerated lifetime testing in the lab and and other durability and reliability tests right or maybe you deploy a small pilot you you make a small uh, pilot run a few units and put them in actual uh, environment to see how how they perform over time sometimes it does make sense okay so these technology readiness levels uh, they, they they have a lot of sense some of these start in basic research and you might not need to do this okay maybe your product is unique but maybe the way actually the technology works is not that unique so a lot of products you know product development teams actually they start at technology readiness three four uh, and then they, they, they keep going, right? And then also what is after that? Well, once the product design is frozen and really completely you know, confirmed, well, you need to think of transferring it to manufacturing, right? And it's not, it's not in this framework of technology readiness levels. Actually, in some cases, when the manufacturing process, manufacturing and testing processes are themselves not very mature, then you go into another framework about manufacturing readiness level. Uh, and you can start working on it when you are about here, okay, depending on the situation. Around technology readiness level five, maybe six. You start at the same time in parallel to also develop the manufacturing process. And then you keep working, you keep making your product design uh, more and more firm and, and you know specified into the small details and, and all confirmed. And at the same time, you're bringing the manufacturing process up to speed, right? But this is technology readiness level is really all about product development, not about process development, right? And mass production, actually, NASA doesn't even care about mass production. It, as I wrote here, it's for highly complex devices to be made in very low quantity, you know, typically. And also, NASA has always tended to uh, spend a lot of money to make things, you know, highly customized, sort of handmade, uh, where and now you can see some of their um, quote-unquote competitors, you know, or let's say alternatives, such as SpaceX doing things much more in a typical manufacturing fashion and so uh, for example spacex definitely thinks uh, of 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 this right uh, where this was much it was much less of an issue for nasa just because uh it's fine they, they were happy spending a lot of money on a f on doing very few units okay so that starts with basic research and then you 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 go into uh, maybe doing a proof of concept 
what is the one or two or three critical functions let's see if we can actually make it work right and then you 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 use um you you, you validate uh some of the components uh maybe some so breadboard and you know now these days a lot of things are done on with arduino module if there are electronics for example um, and then you 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 actually uh, test it and you validate that it works in the right environment. And uh, TR five and six uh, sometimes you know really, uh, and maybe even seven sort of done in parallel. Sometimes it really depends. So maybe after you done uh, you've done something based on an Arduino, then you develop your own standard board, and then you start to um, to do some uh, reliability testing and so on and so forth. Okay. Around technology readiness level seven, eight, you really need to start thinking a lot about the manufacturing process and really make sure that the product is designed for manufacturing. It will be manufacturable at a you know at the right quality level, the right cost, and so on. It's really a must. If you have if you are in TR seven or eight, you haven't thought about that. Um, it, you you kind of already too late most of the time. Okay, TR nine might be needed, might not be needed. If it's the first time you deploy, for example, a wind turbine in uh, in Antarctic Antarctica or <laughs> or on the moon, okay, then you have to to think of this. In some of the cases, in, with relatively simple widgets, this is not needed. Okay, so I spent a lot of time think uh, explaining what are the technical uh, technology readiness levels. Okay, let's compare and and what they do not involve right uh, let's compare them with what is traditionally involved uh, when developing a new consumer product well obviously you need to document the high level requirements and do some planning here typically that's what we call uh, proof of concept identifying the sources of higher highest technical risk and uh, trying to address them and actually prove that yeah the assumptions are okay and we can keep working and then you go into um, some iterations of building prototype testing them seeing the weaknesses and then again m making them and by the way this is really technical right technical readiness level if you develop your own product you also need to do some marketing and some pre-sale work in parallel and here when you plan you usually really 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 want to do some market research okay you approve a lookalike and work like prototype then maybe you've done uh, you, you you start to to do tooling or maybe it's here and you you do you make some final samples you do some further testing maybe certifications and, and reliability testing at the same time um, and and really again you need to go into transfer to manufacturing if possible in parallel of this work here right otherwise if you do everything in a very sequential manner you might run into issues uh, and then uh, pre-production pilot runs and then mass production now i'm going to um, hide this column so i can see uh, here when we develop new products we have a very simple way of calling these uh, specification feasibility study which can improve proof of concept prototypes prototyping um, tooling and yeah really involves what one might call process validation a lot of work here pre-production preparation to make sure you get uh, to the state where you are ready for mass production really uh, boiling down all of these steps uh, as much as possible you get to these six phases that make a lot of sense for our project so far okay consumer electronics uh, again very high level view all of this is PD product development and then once product design is frozen you go into three stages of validation testing and each time making a few samples and then you know more samples to validate and even more samples to validate until you get to the point where you say okay it's ready for mass production there are no critical issue no real major issues and we're ready to ramp up and over time we'll keep continuously improving when i say consumer electronics it's mass consumer electronics it's supposed to be made in the hundreds of thousands or in the millions right EVT, DVT, PVT. I'm not going to go into this. 
Uh, we have some other documents on that. And medical devices, well, here obviously you need to plan, you need to prepare the design inputs, meaning what the, the, the engineers will have to, to work with. Uh, it's really very important to guide them. And you keep working actually on this initial planning. Uh, regulatory requirements are extremely important. Uh, you refine the plan, you start the technical design work, you do initial risk analysis, very, very important. So there's a lot of documentation, a lot of a lot of analysis. Um, and then you start technical design work, you do more design, more design work until you verify and validate prototypes, so verify against uh, the, the requirements that you set and validate with user testing and already a uh, uh, sometimes already a clinical trial at this stage. And then the clinical evaluation, clinical trial uh, might take place after the design is frozen and even after you have made a small pre-production pilot run, uh, which might be here. Um, there's different cases. All of this process validation is very important, including for some of the new equipment, installation qualification uh, off-site and then on-site in the factory, operational qualification, and then uh, what what they call PQ, uh, which involves, among others, a small pilot run, pr production run, right, uh, to make sure everything is okay. So it's really uh, pretty similar in some sense to uh, PVT and, you know, pre-production preparation. And you get to the point where you can say, okay, it's ready for mass production. We update everything. You know, it's effective. It's it's low risk and so on. You go into production. Obviously, uh, you keep uh, following up on what happens and what the users and the patients uh, tell you and what whatever issues you have. Okay, so this was again a, an overall view of the TR levels and what they include, what they do not include, and you should not forget about that. And also, I try to give you a little bit of perspective so you can decide whether it makes sense for you to follow this framework or maybe you want to think of another framework to follow. All right, uh, I hope that was useful. Thank you very much.